person both of us combined this is a podcast about things allison brings a topic we discuss and your market set oh you can find us on the internet binary chest on us and your market set go <laughs> Whew, the race is on i had no idea <laughs> uh, yeah i didn't realize it was a competition i like to keep in your toes uh, yeah well you, you did a really good job <laughs> <laughs> I think I just tripped on a shoelace and fell on my face. <laughs> Apologies. Well, I think the topic this week, I think, is really important because I think it's what really brought you two together to begin with. And uh, I feel explosions like, in the sky? Yeah, no. <laughs> I feel like you just never get to discuss it, you know? And, like, okay. you don't really have a forum to discuss your shared love of psychedelic music albums by Russian artists. I just feel like... <laughs> that it, would be it, accurate. I don't have a forum to discuss that. <laughs> it's a genre, it's the genre that like, I just feel like you, you, you two don't get en enough of an opportunity to discuss, you know? So, so to be clear, like you're just, you're just pushing Jean Rene to write down this isn't actually the topic, right? <laughs> basically, basically, yeah. Oh, that's a relief. No, there are there are definitely Russian psychedelic. That's oh my God, this is a topic. Now I'm panicking. <laughs> now, I'm, now you're panicking. <laughs> but I mean, it's your favorite genre, so like you should be able to just. I mean, like of all the albums, that you, <laughs> of all the albums that you listen to, like what's your go-to? You know, like is it because of the <laughs> album? Art? Else. Go, go to Everyone Russian psychedelic. Everyone forgets their foreign to uh, Russian psychedelic, but they they did it, did it. It's it's a very small leap from drop D tuning to Russian psychedelic, obviously. <laughs> yeah, from guitar to battle like us, but I mean otherwise it's the same exact thing. The same exact thing. Roll. Like there is a the eye roll. No, no, it wasn't eye roll. Um, I'm. It's my thinking pose. Uh, there is a, oh, okay. Wow. There is an, there is a record. There is a record that I bought at the Salvation Army once and literally purchased this record for the cover. Knew nothing about the band, yeah. uh, but it looked like probably maybe it was like some sort of electro industrial type thing, but I had no idea. And the, the artist was cat rapes dog. And the album was God guns and gasoline. I'm sorry. And this was in a thrift store in Utah. No, no, this was in oh. California. <laughs> <laughs> This, this would never be That's found awesome. in Utah. In fact, it probably is banned at the border. Um, <laughs> and it turned out that Cat Rape's dog was a Russian pseudo-electro-industrial band. Singing in English, of course, but with really heavy was. accents. Um, yeah. I was thinking you were going to say it was like basically classical music. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh-huh. Soothing um, lullabies. <laughs> so yeah, no, I, I, I definitely got rid of that. <laughs> um, it did it make it, it did it did make a couple plays at some point. Um, it was not very good for probably a fairly obvious reasons. Um, but but yeah, no, was, clarify. <laughs> We don't need to. We don't need to analyze the the artist's name. I don't think. Um, it was really <laughs> weird, though. It was really weird, and now I'm thinking about about that record again, which I haven't thought. Sorry about that. Yeah. Sorry about your luck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I have very 
my my knowledge of Russian artists in general uh, is fairly narrow. Um, currently, it 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 begins and ends at Pussy Riot. That makes sense. Which, for uh, those of you who don't know, is obviously the 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 artist that whose members were imprisoned by uh, the Russian uh, authorities uh, for basically walking while feminist. Recording. I mean, it's Russian feminist. punk band, yeah. but in like the tradition of punk. Yes. Yes. And I, I, it was, what was interesting was when I first learned about Pussy Riot, and it was through these, through these uh, charges and through them going, getting thrown in prison, um, and I li and it was Russian punk band Pussy Right blah 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 and I listened to them I'm like that's punk because their sound is actually very kind of like poppy and electronic oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah very much more in the spirit as a, as opposed to in the style yeah 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 also is Walking Wall Feminist not a band name yet because it's, it's not <laughs> what what genre would that be. Obviously, Riot well, Girl. Let's yeah. check. It would have to be Riot Girl. <laughs> it's a mandatory. <laughs> it would are, be. Are you doing slash genre nader? Of course I am. <laughs> it would be EDM with hints of harpsichord. <laughs> hints. It feels a bit constrained. Yeah. A little dab here and there. <laughs> Well, the harpsichord really, really took a thrashing when the piano came out, huh? <laughs> well, that's the quote of the episode right there. <laughs> a, th a thrashing is so such a like, um, very just deliberate <laughs> verb for that. It's very harsh. Just a thrashing. <laughs> People just would not let up on that heart. <laughs> <laughs> I, but isn't it like, isn't it like when automobiles replace like horse-drawn carriages? How old do you In, think under I Under a decade. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Gary, it's exactly well, like that. Well, if uh, my memory serves, it is exactly like that. <laughs> I'm, <sighs> I'm giving there is a compelling point here to be made and that is that the harpsichord lacked the ability to handle like the great dynamics that a piano has that's true. you know i mean harpsichord that twang happens and that's it you have you don't have a ton of dynamic control so i mean piano like brought like a, a new well a new dynamic <laughs> to music I went yeah, in my long conversations with Mozart, uh, he often spoke of the dynamic that uh, the piano brought to uh, music and composing and music composition. Do you not think about the progression of instruments? Like not I as much as you do. I guess not. I was just thinking about um, not mandolins not too long ago and sort of doing a bit of research on the mandolin and how it ended up as we know it today as a bluegrass instrument. But I mean, it's not, you know, mandolin is not a bluegrass instrument. Do people think of it as bluegrassy? I don't. I guess, really? no, well, I mean, like it can be, but it mostly is just because of, um, oh, what's his name? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, oh, what's his name? Very influential in the mandolin, uh, very influential mandolin player. Yeah, that guy. Mandolin is as it were. Um, oh darn. Yeah. You know, what's his name? His, his first name is Chris. His last name begins with a T. And that's all I've got right now. But I'll get back to you on that. Chris. Turner? No. Tucker? Thompson? Thomas? Tucker. We, there's a long list of names we got going down. <laughs> Ruby <Rye! laughs> It's not Chris Tucker. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> But banjo, the same thing, right? Like, I'll slap some strings on a Carbon drum. Man. What? Carbon, Carbon Man? 
but banjo is definitely. Sorry, I got guy. stuck at Chris Tucker. I'm not going anywhere <laughs> else. I'm, 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 I'm right. That's okay, fine. You're all over we'll, here. We'll catch up. We go for it. We'll catch up. We'll catch up. <laughs> we're doing. We're talking yeah. instruments, and there's like weird impressions happening over in the corner that we're just like not even acknowledging. I think that's the hilarious. <laughs> And you know, like, the old, like, paintings you have of instruments where, like, the neck turns and the tuning pegs were, like, at 90 degrees to the, to the, uh, I don't know, is that the, that's the nut at one end and the bridge is at the other, right? Yeah. So, like, at 90. Sorry. Well, no, on any string instrument. Like, a gourd with strings on it and a hole in it. Like, I mean, literally, like, and it has the bridge, and then at the end, like, the wood turns 90 degrees, and the tuning pegs are these weird things. I mean, it. How did anybody come up with the idea of plucking strings? No one had no one had rubber bands back then, <laughs> you know. That's true. I mean, like, like what did they what did they tighten up? And they're like, oh neat, I can make different sounds with this. I, I just it's just fascinating. Anything like, weird muscle sinew and <clears throat> gross things. And, and I mean, as a result of all this, how did guitar settle in as like the de facto like string instrument? That's that's it's problematic for me because it's not. Um, the tuning isn't intuitive. Like if you grab like a like a mandolin, right? Every I think it, is it fourths. I'm pretty sure it's fourths all the way up the neck. You know, it it's, it the guitar is not intuitive. There's that weird jump in the middle where it's a third and then back to fourth or whatever. It is. I don't know. I musically can chime in here, but it, it just doesn't it doesn't make sense to me. How do we how do we settle on that tuning as being the right way to tune an instrument that's easy to learn to play, right? String instrument. But like, how did we decide that that's the right way? Or how did we get to that tuning? Because we well, just, I think, like, we're like, that's aesthetically pleasing. It sounds like it's right. <laughs> yeah, but it's not. If you play it completely open, it's not. Like, it's, it's not. It's like a, like a weird guitar gatekeeping where it's like, then only, only the people who really know. Obviously, that's what I'm suggesting. It's like the, it's like, like the, the shadow government, right? It's the shadow musicians that are determined. How guitar is off the Illuminati uh, determined the tuning, the common tuning for the guitar. Is that what you're suggesting? No, I'm not suggesting it. I know it to be true. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, um, Gary was, and once Gary exposed that secret, he was never seen again. <laughs> see that like security light behind you start flashing and then some <laughs> hoods. A come helicopter up. lands in the background. <laughs> yeah. Like, that was an exciting episode. <laughs> Back for Tuesday's recording. They're just a duo now. It's kind of lackluster, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got rid of the they got rid of the, the guy that wasn't as good as the other two. So, it's established during introductions in this episode. No, we'll uh, we'll we'll have you we'll have your 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 feed in, and we'll have to introduce you as uh, your witness protection name, and and like completely obscured in the dark. We can't show mm -hmm. your face. Monty Saratoga. Your uh, your voices through a voice masking device that's true which but we can't afford the show the voice masking device was my hand and yeah we can't afford an actual device so you're gonna have to just do <laughs> it yourself and on occasion like i'll adjust in my seat and accidentally like shift into the lights so you can see my yeah seat. we all know we're like whoop yeah oh well everybody blink right now okay <laughs> So it's getting a bit chilly down here. Yeah, Gary is bundled up with about 15 coats and earmuffs, uh, which is... I have, you know, uh, I have a jacket on. Uh, I put on my uh, moccasins. Let's walk out the back porch. It's about 54 and a half degrees. Wow. That's yeah. awfully cold. I know. I, yesterday when I came out here, I mean, I always work on the back porch barefoot, obviously. And uh, I walked out here. It is a little chilly to not have anything on my feet. So I had to go dig out my, my uh, moccasins that I wear when it's like between this and 60. But I'm pretty close I, to my lower I limit right I think I walked out of the house uh, for a minute yesterday or the day before. I, I don't usually walk out of the house in general, so <laughs> this is the thing. And, um, Congrats. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I went outside and I was like, oh, it's, it's actually kind of nice out here. I could almost work out here. And probably it was about 54. <laughs> But the diff was it sunny? Yes. That makes a huge difference. It's like 54 and sunny versus 54 and overcast. Also, <clears throat> 54 if you live in Utah and 54 if you live in Florida. It's a different thing, too. 
We are expecting to be down in the 30s and 40s the next couple nights. That's so, uh, winter has arrived. That's the way it works here. We're in the 30s and 40s for a couple nights, and then it's going to be back up in like the 60s for a week, and then drift chilly again, and then back up in the 60s for a while. So, Gary, I hear the midterms are the gift they keep giving. And you're <laughs> Did we, not, did we not talk about this last week? I think we did, didn't we? Well, I think we did, yeah. except that it's not over Florida, yet. Is Florida still counting? Yeah. And I answered the question then, why does Florida have such, such a hard time counting? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a bit disappointing. It's hard now, being Florida. If, if, if we're being so, fair, so we, we've still got, we've still got a, uh, an election that's being counted here that's Two of them, in fact, that are razor thin. One of them, which is a proposition on gerrymandering, and one of which is um, the incumbent Republican Senator uh, Mia Love and uh, Democrat Mayor, who is slimly in the lead, um, who might over, who has been in the lead since Election Day, uh, Ben McAdams, which would be our first blue, uh, not Senator, um, House Representative. But I mean, that would be the first patch of blue in who God knows how long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we definitely uh, don't have figured out governor or senator. I mean, yeah, governor, like, governor wasn't a question, uh, and senator senator wasn't a question. Mitt Mitt won by like I don't know. He he had seventy percent or something. What is Mitt short for? <clears throat> Mittens. <laughs> feels, like, feels like something I should good old, know. Mi good old Mittens Romney. I don't know. Maybe Mitchell, but it's a family name, sound right. right? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't care. It's Mitt. That's Mittens. Mittens. Good old Mittens Romney. They named him after the the family cat. Yeah. Or dog. I guess it could have been a dog. <laughs> it's not as cool as Indiana Jones, but. <sighs> They were going in that vein. So uh, Russian psychedelic music uh, peaked around 1968. That and, early? No. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. It's a very vintage genre, I think, to like latch on to, right? And uh, Andy Warhol notably said about Russian psychedelic, this is music. <laughs> I could have said damn near anything. <laughs> Someone would point to it and say, he's right, you know. It's an excellent point. <laughs> I think, I don't know if it's true or not. At some point I had a, uh, a picture of me standing in front of a bunch of uh, Warhol um, works at our local art museum as my header and my Twitter thing. I don't know what it is now. It might still be that. You can find out right now at twitter.com slash binary Gary. Tell Gary what his header photo is. <laughs> you need to, to be more we... conscious of your social media situation. Oh, man. I'm barely conscious of my social media situation. Less and less. I sort of had to use it a bit this weekend, but I just don't. Sort of had to. I sort of had to, yeah. I, I mean, I was, I was speaking at a word camp, so I felt like I had to okay. engage with, it, with okay. people. Um, but I, I don't. I read it every few days. I don't know. This may be the time when I delete Twitter from my phone and just stop tweeting. I have nothing to, I mean, it's a personal decision and I encourage you <laughs> I to make the right decision for you. I left Facebook a while ago. I haven't, I haven't left uh, Twitter. I still look at it occasionally, but I find, I used to go to Twitter for like news type stuff. Um, but then you get the echo chamber, um, where all the news that you're getting is all just people that, and that's not, so it's not great for that either. Um, and I've tried to like diversify the, the people that I follow. Um, but it's, it's a, it's a fire hose of crap. And so I'm not going to watch the fire hose. Um, so I take occasional glimpses and, and sometimes those glimpses are, you know, enlightening and sometimes I get something out of it but most of the time it's just noise and i don't yeah and i find that i less and less i use it for 
news. Oh, yeah. But actually using the Apple News app. Oh. Nice. nice. No, I don't use Twitter for news. I mean, it filters in there occasionally, little tidbits that, but most of the time, I don't know. I have like lists and cultivated and things are muted and it's a very like constructed situation. <laughs> there are, um, there are some great people on Twitter that make some great points um, that I wouldn't run into if they opted to take it yeah. to like a platform like, you know, WordPress or something where I have to like follow an RSS feed, you know, to hell with that. Um, <laughs> so, so that there's value in that. Um, especially when like PHP world is going on right now. So there's some interesting things rolling out of that for people that I follow. Um, Man, when did RSLs get a bad name? What? When did RSS get a bad, get such a bad name? <laughs> when Google closed feed or whatever that thing was it's, called. It's like, it's like, like, yeah. I feel bad for, I, for I, RSS. I just, really I simple like syndication. XML. You know, were it, were it um, Jason, it'd be okay. But then it would be RSS J yes R R R really simple. RSJ? It would J still be S S J S JSON simple syndication JSS JSS yeah that's okay R J S like really that. really JSON syndication I don't know I still have I use what do I use Feedly or something for my RSS feed yeah. it's only because like I don't want to have to stay I want to stay up to date with certain things but I don't want to have to like oh if i've missed their tweet about it then it's gone in the wind and whatever so then i'm just like oh no it'll pop up there so i'm good yeah yeah no i i i've resigned myself a long time ago to letting the things that drift off in the wind to just drift off be gone <laughs> if it doesn't percolate it's fine yeah. But for like for for I don't know until I started using Apple News for actual news and until we got uh, still we got a newspaper subscription to Salt Lake Tribune, literally my source for like world news was uh, watching Seth Meyers on YouTube. Seth Meyers and Stephen Colbert were like <laughs> YouTube videos and and weekend update from Saturday Night Live. Those were my that was it for my world and outside of my bubble news. And I realized at some point that that was a little bit maybe biased. Maybe, <laughs> but humorous. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes you need those, I don't know, like maybe not solely that, but like. Ugh. Oh, I still, I still use them because it puts, it makes the things that make me wanna cry kind Slightly of funny different. yeah exactly yeah i'm the same way it, it just it reframes the horribleness that is every day that <laughs> 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 was <so> dark <laughs> binary jazz bring you that silver lining <laughs> 2018 i'm gonna go read some arby's tweets oh jesus um, <clears throat> just because I'm curious, how, how will this topic resolve? Because we generally know what the topic is. So do at you? the end of the day... Because you avoided talking about it quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously it resolves when the timer comes up and we have to answer questions. And there's well, a I'm new wondering. backlog because I submitted... <laughs> More Allison questions. I wonder if Allison will hum a few bars of her favorite Russian second. I like, yeah, I like the one that goes, ch -ch <laughs> <laughs> That's the one with the theremin, right? Yeah, and there's that, like, it's almost like the beat is about to drop about 20 seconds in, but then they make you wait about 12 more seconds. And I feel like that elevation really, <laughs> really brings it to the forefront. I don't know. Yes, by, by Russian psychedelic there? pioneers, uh, magnificent elephant. Yeah. It's a loose translation. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Have either of you built a theremin? No, no. sadly. I, I do. It's still on my list. I want to get. I want to get a kit and yeah. build it. But I haven't. But yeah, 
it's actually we're probably at the point where where it where it's probably time now i i've always i've been waiting until the kids are like old enough where i could it could actually sort of be like let's learn electronics and build a theremin mm -hmm. um do you do a lot of hardware hacking no but okay. i did build an analog synthesizer once from a kit um hmm. i didn't have a good i didn't have a good like case for it because it was like a rack mounted deal um, so it was literally in this cardboard box and then I moved uh, away, like I moved here from California and somehow along the trip, it, it didn't survive. <laughs> Whether I, it might've been the heat in the car or something, but the, the, <laughs> the, the, the connections weren't good. I would, I'm not good at soldering. So that, that could be too, um, part of it, but it did work for a while. I did get a couple recordings out of it and it was pretty neat. Um. It had a it had a MIDI component, so you could you could connect it to a MIDI keyboard and and. Ooh, that's awesome! Yeah. There's like a MIDI like a MIDI controller chip, then I guess that would. Yeah, would, yeah. I mean, you, could, you, you, do, you like, couldn't you couldn't that. feed you couldn't feed uh, inputs from the analog synthesizer into uh, something, but you could feed your synthesizer in or your MIDI keyboard into. Uh, into the analog synthesizer. So if you, you create the sound and then you can play it on a synthesizer, which is pretty neat. And then you ob obviously I have, output it to a amp or something. Yeah, I've always wanted to build a prod. This is so dumb. I've wanted to build um, like a PHP log analyzer with MIDI output. So as you would stream the log file in, you would key different things and you could sort of get like a sound of what a normal log file was. Um, <laughs> And then run it through something that was abnormal. I don't know. I, I don't actually know if that's an idea or not. I, I, I mean, it's a, it's something. At, at some point in time, uh, because you know, experimental music is is my jam. Um, I found a random MIDI song generator, or something. Um, or maybe there is something that like Wolfram out. Wolfram Alpha Alpha would output like a search in MIDI output or something like there's yeah that was it because I remember it was it was somehow tied to Wolfram Alpha um, and so you could like translate something into MIDI output and it was literally just random noise and it was amazing. I I dabbled real lightly in a um, a MIDI JS library um, to hook my keyboard up to my computer screen. So I went to the kids' school, like, we could, are you familiar with boom whackers, the color? Have we talked about boom whackers before? Oh, Probably. yeah. I think you've described them before. <laughs> so yeah. they're, like, they're colored tubes, and they're different lengths, and each one is a different note. So I, I wrote a thing that um, when I played on the keyboard, the keyboard and the screen would change color, or would, like, it would light up the key that I was playing in the color of the boom whackers we played. So if I played a C, the C on the keyboard was red, and it would turn red, so the kids need to play their C. So um, I think I had the note on the screen as well. But I mean, it was just like one of those things like exposed like notes as well as, um, I don't know, the concept of music with the boom whackers. I don't know that it was really effective. I, I spent a lot more time dabbling with JS than I probably needed to. <laughs> it's super fun, it's super fun. And now, now that I've done that, I would like want, I want MIDI output on a lot of things. <clears throat> All of the things. So, yeah. I feel like for a P log, I would want a not great one to sound like a screeching fax machine. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of suspect that it's all going to sound like static. <laughs> um, but I'm not even sure like how I would, I'm not even really sure how I'd approach it. Yeah. Like is velocity equivalent to the, uh, I once, like I the, once tried to translate text into notes and um basically i like essentially like or, or maybe numbers into notes i don't know if it was numbers that would be easy because the numbers would be the like the the distance between the notes uh but i think it was text and i think that like like for all the letters that don't exist in the in the musical um hey here's a gift we've removed the 40 minute time limit on your first group meeting hmm. But it's, um, just, yeah. So we don't have a timer. That's going to be uh, daunting. Um, <laughs> artificial well, timer. I didn't block off enough time for this today. Yeah. Um, Unlimited minutes. I don't know yeah. how to live my life. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> what is going on? What was I saying? Oh yeah, so I had to like I had to like improvise when it came to like letters of the alphabet in whatever thing I was translating into music uh, that weren't represented by the actual. You you didn't just like map like no would it be it would be no about three octaves no. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, just, I started at middle C I think or maybe I went to a couple octaves lower so I could get the range and and yeah I just was like Chris C uh, that one. <laughs> H, uh, uh, R, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I think some of the, so, I think, I think some of the things too were like, were, would be beats in between notes. So like Allison, boop, tar, boop. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how I'm going to introduce myself from now on. <laughs> really, really let it hang there, too. <laughs> I wonder if more or less people will actually would remember my name if, if I, they're just like, it was a really weird introduction, and that's why we remember. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so can you resolve this topic for us, please? There's the no end. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what kind of closure you need from me on this. <laughs> I just maybe your favorite Russian band. Oh, I've got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure we could Google uh, Russian psychedelic. I mean. Um, I it have be, like Wiki will be like famously there was never a Russian psychedelic scene as a result of import restrictions. On <laughs> there's um well there's I mean I have two band names if that's if that would be helpful closure wise that for you. Would do it for me. That would that would be sufficient. Okay, there's one called Zvuki Moo, which is actually produced by Brian Eno. So throw that yeah. out there for you from the late eighties. Um, I don't know if it's any good. But uh, involves some remixes and. Brian Eno do... is it has a far a lengthier career than just the late eighties. Oh yeah, no, but this this album in particular is from the late eighties, which I ah. feel like is important to, to okay. reference just because Last of notes. the album cover alone. Oh, oh, good, yeah. It's very. I don't know. And and you said there's two bands. So what's the oh, other? Oh yeah, one? the let's see what's the other one. Fifty two. Uh, Shiz and Co. I don't know how you pronounce it. It's C H I Z H. Ooh, and they have a live album as well. Ooh. <laughs> one song, <laughs> sixty nine minutes. <laughs> it does include the song Hoochie Coochie Man. Which hoochie coochie man. Could, hoochie be, coochie man. could be a great hit. I don't know. There's um two people in the band named Sergey, which seems Obviously. like a high ratio. I mean, I wonder if their select team has the Aunt Sergeys. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Get a hold of all of them at once. Fifty percent of Russian men are named Sergey, so I don't know that that's really saying much. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe my. Yeah, my. That's not. That's. Is that right? Is there no. 50% named Dimitri? Yes. No. I Sure. The other 50 said. Every Russian person you've had is named Dimitri. But they've all been spelled differently. Oh. So. Well, that's, that's a differentiation then. Yeah, maybe my ear, maybe my ear is not. I, I isn't, 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 isn't Dimitri isn't, and Dimitri. Isn't, isn't different spellings of Dimitri or really any of those names or words just English bastardization of... of a language that doesn't translate into English very well. Maybe. Sure, why not? Yes. I'm gonna go. We're like yes. Excellent. All right. I do have keycaps, key cover, like Russian keyboard covers for my. Why? I was so inclined. Why? why? Yeah. Why? Because <laughs> my friend Dimitri gave them to me. <laughs> okay. Oh, but you don't use them. You just you're, you have them. Right. I well I they would be useless to me. Well that. That was the why, why we sounded so astonished. 
<laughs> so why do you have them? <laughs> uh, he gave them to me, and I, they, I stuck them somewhere and never did anything else with them. I need to get rid of them. I don't need them. Maybe someone can benefit from them. If you're listening to the program and need Russian, uh, they're stickers. I mean, they're not a key cap. Like I don't pull and replace the key key caps. They go on top of the English keyboard or the whatever. What do we call this keyboard? A keyboard. I. That's what I call it. Anyway, if you need uh, Russian stickers and I can find them, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to me. And... Input device. Yeah. I guess you could put it on top of your mouse if you wanted. <laughs> All 26 um, characters. Yeah, it's, uh, there's a problem, I think, in one section that there's like a key that's split that is not split on my keyboard. So mm. I'm not sure if I need to like chisel it in half or <laughs> if I just put both stickers on. I mean, that wasn't a deal breaker ultimately. The weird, um, the weird deal breaker is that you don't know Russian. <laughs> I mean, that was a minor. Yeah, that's also a big part of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not great at the Russian. Yeah. That'd, that'd, so, be a, so that'd be one way of getting better at it, though. Having to stare at the I don't know that it would, because it's not like there's a one-to-one -one translation between Russian <laughs> characters and English letters, so I don't know that it would really help. I in the sink or swim, you'd sink. Yeah. When I type it, you know? Maybe I could type it and then copy and paste it into Google Translate. And we all know Google Translate is perfect. <laughs> I, so, I think it's gotten better. Um, but that's... Well, there is something. That's really only judging by translating things to and from other languages. <laughs> so I used Google Translate when I would go to China. I, my last trip over there, I had um, data on my phone and would use Google Translate when I was trying to explain like a, a really specific concept that was not coming across. Um, I would write it and then translate it to, uh, to Mandarin. And, the, and most often they would look at it and understand. And in some cases, went the other direction, they would draw the character and translate to English. That didn't happen as frequently. Um, yeah, I, I was, and, and I mean, often the translations were just like a train of words. Mm. When you, you, you went, oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, I was mostly talking about like taking a, a string of text uh, or a sentence, translating it into some Eastern language, and then translating it back and seeing what comes, um, which I used to do fairly regularly for a while because you get some pretty wacky stuff back in from google translate although it wasn't google translate at the time it was like must have been is it like babble fish or something yeah i was gonna say was there babble fish yeah <laughs> there was yeah yeah did um somebody wrote a bot that did that right that they would use a google translate and send it to a language and back until like they got into a loop and settled on like what the definition was back and forth well if it hasn't happened it should happen <laughs> Oh, it totally did. I, I don't remember what the bot was. I, I'm certain it had to be on Twitter because where else would I have seen something like that? <laughs> See, Twitter is for some things. Because wouldn't it be fun if you could like look at someone's tweet and say, yeah, your tweet when translated back and forth from English to Russian uh, means this. Means <laughs> this. Yeah, that, that sounds like a politically loaded bot. So now's generally the time when we answer questions, if we have listener questions, which we don't. So you, the listener, need to get on it. You go to binaryjazz.us or contact us on Twitter, that thing that none of us actually use, which is binary jazz, by the way. Uh, Wait, so when we don't have questions, excuse me, Gary, what was that? I, I'm confused. We don't use Twitter. We don't use the our, our account. We don't use Twitter on Twitter. None of us use Twitter. Who monitors our account? I do on Twitter. I'm there. Okay. Very low activity. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we have some questions from Allison, which we'll uh, go through the backlog of, of new questions. Um, and the first one that uh, we're going to do today is: Is cereal soup? And I have a very definite answer to this question because no, absolutely cereal is soup because putting milk in cereal is gross. <laughs> <laughs> it has always been gross. It will never not be gross. 
are cold soups usually like simmered first and then chilled or are cold soups made cold and remain cold Mm. Uh, i feel like several cold soups i know of are there's like a simmering process to ingredients and then they are chilled but right I don't know. I, I the only these so the only cold soup that I really know of, first and then let it chill. I believe that would be a soup. The only the only cold soup I that know is of is gazpacho, disgusting. and I can't imagine that gazpacho is is like just because like what is when you add water to something and you don't heat it, it's just water with some stuff in it. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. so otherwise, when you go to the airport or that fancy hotel where they have the cucumber water, it wouldn't be cucumber water; it would be soup. It would be soup, right? Right. So, cereal is yeah, cucumber mint soup. Cereal is not soup. Is it, would that make tea a soup then? No. Okay. <laughs> is it because because, it? because reasons? <laughs> because reasons. I, I mean, I, I don't care. I I mean, I. Is it because it's leafy? Uh, like it's it's. Well, you can have cabbage Seat soup. From something? Ooh. You don't like cabbage soup? No. I don't like cabbages. Okay. <laughs> Generally That's a cabbage. topic for another week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, we've covered that one. That's excellent. <clears throat> um, go microwave some cereal so I can have cereal soup. I don't know. Should I work from the back or should I just pick and choose one of the new ones? Random. Go random. Random. Okay. We need to question APIs. Uh, yeah, see. we do. Oh, there's only... Okay. The world needs more APIs. Uh, pick a number between one and four. No, pick a number for between Seven. one and five. Seven. Five. Uh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, wait, 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 wait. Seven. Okay, we can do this. We can do this. We can do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. Um, what famous historical person comes to mind that you would want least at a, as a dinner party guest? Well, Adolf Hitler, obviously. Donald <laughs> Trump. Ooh. That's, he's not a famous historical person. About to be. Uh, Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan. I don't mean I, that. Sounds like I made like a personal threat on the president's life. <laughs> <laughs> He's about to be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bill He's Cosby. Um, this is the worst dinner party ever. <laughs> uh, this is the dinner party that I arrive. And I like, arrive at the and castle phone. and I turn around and I'm just like, nope. Geng- Genghis Khan. <laughs> Don't know that I'd want to meet him. Um, wait, we also, we want Lisa to dinner party. It doesn't necessarily need to be the, that the person is a bad person. It could just be that they're No, really it could messy. just be someone who you're just like, wow, they're boring, or like, I have nothing to talk about. Or like, they're really messy. Yeah, it could just be a slob. <laughs> <laughs> Although we could, we could flip it. Uh, I feel like Albert Einstein would be a really interesting dinner party guest because he would be like, just talking about huh. yeah, tangential about things. Jerry Seinfeld. No. <laughs> yeah, I would want him at a dinner party. Yeah. What the hell yeah. with that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just we'll I put Jerry fun. Seinfeld and Bill Cosby like in, in a closet and then they could just stay there for the rest of the evening. Hanging out. Well, comedians and cars getting coffee, right? Fairly mm-hmm. decent show. But if, if Seinfeld said it- at a dinner party, I would not stay there. You know? But the thing about that show is that he doesn't actually like listen or like he doesn't converse no, in the way that I would like it to go. What's the, the deal called... <laughs> with cars? <laughs> the, the, the show should be called um, Comedians and Cars Doing Their Individual Shtick Simultaneously. Like it's what it should be called. Because there's there are very rarely any interactions of like real human value in there. Mm-hmm. I like the diversity of comedians. I like that. I like the cars. <laughs> Wait, the diversity of cars is very different than the diversity of comedians on that show. <laughs> I mean, it's all like A-list people that have done whatever they need to do to sell their souls to be known names. I mean, that's it. Yeah, but he's like, I don't know, he just doesn't. I Look, I watch it. I chuckle. I've rewatched the Mel Brooks one. Like, zillions of times because it makes me so happy but like he, there's a lot of work to be done on that whole 
pod of nonsense. I have not. It's it's a it's a set, it's just a chuckle. You're right. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a guffaw or a knee slapper. It's <laughs> it's, not a guffaw. it's definitely a show I watch when I'm distracted, like laptop yeah. open, working on something else. Like it's a show that does not require my attention. Wow. With that stellar review, yeah, um, everybody go check that out. Exactly. I specifically <laughs> recommend the Mel Brooks episode. I don't know. Basically, like I like all the episodes you'd think I would like. The ones that are like Kate McKinnon, <laughs> Ellen yeah. DeGeneres. Well, actually, the Ellen DeGeneres one is not actually worth a, worth a watch, unfortunately. There, there are quite a few where, just like that. Eh. It's not, it was a show. It had a few chuckles and that was it. Yeah, yeah. By and large, why did I watch that show? Because you want to, you like, want to like the idea and the concept and in, in a concept, it's a great idea, but they don't actually have a real conversation between two people. There are two people existing and doing their shticks and not actually recognizing each other as, as humans. It's very bizarre. Well, to be fair, I mean, the show is not called here, Comedians Having a Conversation with Coffee in Cars. It's just coffee. Why would they be having a conversation with coffee? <laughs> Comedians. Well, hello there, coffee. How are you? <laughs> having a conversation, <laughs> comma, with coffee, co- Oxford, comma, <laughs> in Cars. But see, that Oxford title is comma. just really... Stupid. Really over the top. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, although it would probably be better off titled that way. So it, it occurs to me um, that we're not going, this episode is not going to benefit from the arbitrary uh, interruption at the end of the show where we're in mid I would argue that it should have benefited from it like three minutes ago. <laughs> God, that's, when, <laughs> that's when it should have happened. <laughs> which which so, means that, uh, that maybe I need to arbitrarily... Uh, and the call just cut it off yeah if you do that though um then thank you for listening to binary jazz if you like this episode you can subscribe to us on itunes or google play you can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on twitter at at binary jazz Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.